Guillermo Savonarola, aka the Master of Flagellation, was born in the Duchy of Ferrara in September 1452. Taught from an early age by his grandfather Michel, poor little Girolamo developed a sense of righteousness that would lead him through life, stating at a young age that, quote, the blind wickedness of the peoples of Italy would lead to their downfall. The Italian Renaissance, with its budding humanist movements, art, and poetry, absolutely disgusted him. In April 1475, Savonarola gave up his pursuit of becoming a doctor and joined the Dominican Order at Bologna. He spent the next several years preaching and discussing the teachings of renowned scholar and all-around ladies' man, St. Thomas Aquinas. Following brief stints in the convent at San Marco and San Gimiano in Lent, Savonarola was brought to Florence by Lorenzo de' Medici in 1490. Upon arrival, our dear boy began attacking the government for its abuses of the people, and, uh, it made him really popular. So popular, in fact, that Lorenzo himself requested Savonarola's blessing while he was on his deathbed. With Lorenzo dead, our old friend Charles VIII swept in and absolutely destroyed any Italian force he came into contact with. Using his influence to balance the scales, Savonarola quickly found himself standing atop the rubble. And how did he use the political capital? Oh, no big deal, he just founded a democratic government. This, unsurprisingly, made him some notable enemies, including the Duke of Milan, and top 10 worst pope ever, Alexander VI. Alex praised Girolamo. Alex threatened to excommunicate Girolamo. Girolamo responded by pointing out his typos. Alexander then banned him from preaching. Savonarola preached anyway. He drew crowds as large as 12,000 people. Then, Alex offered him a cardinal's hat. He said, F*** that. Girolamo continued preaching and increasing his popularity, culminating in the bonfire of the vanities, all the while, he continued railing against the abuses of the Catholic Church and advocated for a return to the religious devotion of the past. After finally getting tired of his sh** on May 12, 1497, Alexander VI excommunicated Savonarola and gave Florence an ultimatum, give up Savonarola or be hit with the papal interdict. After constant pressure from the government, Savonarola withdrew from public life. Later, in 1498, when challenged to prove God's divine power, Savonarola was roped into walking across hot coals in a trial by fire. This was the first trial by fire in Florence in over 400 years, and it was to take place on April 7, 1498. It did not go well. Savonarola, along with two other friars, were arrested and imprisoned. After being tortured, Savonarola confessed to having invented his prophecies and visions, then he recanted and then confessed again. On the morning of May 23rd, 1498, he, along with the other two friars, were led out into the main square in front of a tribunal, and they were condemned as heretics. Each of the friars was placed on a separate gallows, and they were hanged from the neck while fires were ignited below them. To prevent anyone from searching for relics or finding a place to mourn the dead, their ashes were carted away and scattered in the Arno. So what did all this turmoil and religious dick measuring accomplish? Well, to start, it inspired Martin Luther, who said, quote, Christ canonizes Savonarola through us, even though popes and papists burst to pieces over it. The rise and fall of Girolamo Savonarola is truly remarkable and shows just how fragile the balance of power was in Renaissance Italy and in Florence in particular. In the span of just a decade, the city went from being dominated by the Medici to being dominated by Savonarola to being in a, a shifting state of chaos. And it was out of this chaos that the encouragement for the Reformation, the Counter-Reformation, and eventually the Enlightenment found its roots, which led to the foundation of the United States and the pushing of culture in a new direction while simultaneously shaking its fist at the current direction. <laughs>